Hey everyone, welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. Thank you once again to the children out there who are bothering their parents enough to get them to just go into that app store and rate the podcast. It helps a ton. So if you have a second, just go in there, give it that five-star rating, and then you can leave the room and I'll do the rest of the storytelling. Now, it's time for episode 72, The Elven Asteroid. So just get as comfy as you can in those beds, cozy up in those blankets, and sink into those pillows. And just imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. You wake up once again inside the spaceship. You get up, you do your normal stretches, and you go out into the main area. Well, what's up today, spaceship? I am detecting a strange anomaly says the spaceship. Not another portal back in time, you say. No, this time the anomaly seems to be an asteroid that is acting strangely, explains spaceship. What do you mean acting strangely, you ask? I mean it is flying where it should not be flying, at a speed that it should not be traveling. Oh, well that does sound intriguing, you say. Let's go check it out. Understood. Setting course, says Spaceship. Spaceship turns a little bit to the left and starts flying straight towards the asteroid. You look out of the view screen, and soon, in the distance, you see something that looks a bit like a star. As you get closer, you see a gigantic and almost completely spherical asteroid. But there's something on top of it, like a building or a, a ship or something built right into it. What's that, you ask? That seems to be a ship that has been connected to the asteroid explains the spaceship. The asteroid seems to have some sort of propulsion system attached. Well, let's go check it out. The ship flies up to the asteroid, matches its speed, and slowly comes down for a landing on top of it. Special landing gear pops out of the ship and digs down into the asteroid as you land. You press the button on your watch that causes a spacesuit to fold out around your whole body. And then, you walk to the back hatch. You press a button, and the hatch folds open, and a little platform folds out. You walk out the back of the ship onto the asteroid. You look around and you see another ship that's much, much larger, but it looks really old and beaten up, and huge parts of it are completely connected to the asteroid, like it's built right in, or the asteroid's built around it, or something like that. You just think about flying once again, and your spacesuit allows you to lift up off the ground, just above the asteroid. You fly around the huge ship, and then, you hear something behind you. You turn around and you see that, well, basically a hatch on the top of the asteroid is opened up. And there's a whole bunch of little spacemen in spacesuits who have come out. And they're all pointing little lasers at you. You put your hands up in the air and say, activate shield. A spherical energy shield appears around you just in time as the little aliens start firing at you. I come in peace, you say. I come in peace. You hear the aliens saying something strange, but you can't understand what it is. Spaceship, can you understand what they're saying? Attempting to translate. This is a language I have never been exposed to explains the ship. 
the aliens keep blasting, but your shield seems to hold them off. Shield percentage down to 90%, says the ship. Well, you better get translating soon. In the meantime, activate the sleep lasers. Activating sleep lasers, says the ship. Out of both of your wrists pop out little laser guns. You know they only shoot the kind of laser that makes people fall asleep. So, you begin pointing them at the aliens. Three, two, one, here I go. Wait, says the spaceship. I have finished translating their language. Hey, get off our planet. We don't want you here. What do you think you're trying to do? Get him, everybody! You hear someone saying. I come in peace, you say. What? You can speak our language? How do we know you come in peace? Well, I'm not shooting back at you, you say. It looked like you were about to. This is only a sleep ray, you explain. Look! You fire the sleep ray at one of the aliens, who immediately straightens up, falls over on his side, and begins to snore. Hmm, <laughs> says one of the leaders. Well, he sleeps all the time, but I guess that does prove something. Well, if you are friendly, we better bring you to our leader. Come with us. You follow the little aliens who walk back inside the hatch on the top of the asteroid. You step directly onto something that seems to be an elevator platform. The hatch closes above you, and the elevator starts to go down. Soon, it comes to a stop, and you're staring down a hallway made entirely of metal with lots of doors on every side of you. What is this place, you ask? This is our home, says one of the alien-looking creatures. All of the aliens take off their helmets, and you see that they look like... Well, they basically look like elves or something. Very short, pointy ears, high-pitched voices... Why do you live on an asteroid, you ask? Our home was destroyed, and at the time we had no way of traveling through space, or at least not very far through space. We had one spaceship capable of exiting the atmosphere of the planet. Uh, luckily, we were a small community, and we got everyone on board. Just before the planet was destroyed, we flew off into space, but we had nowhere to go. And then we found this asteroid. We built our homes inside it, created a community, and eventually we figured out how to make the asteroid go towards another planet. We've been living on it for centuries. Generations and generations of us will we slowly travel to a new planet, explains the little elf-like alien. Wow. You mean you guys have lived on this asteroid for hundreds of years? Just flying through space? How do you have everything you need? Let me show you around says the little elven alien guy. You walk down the corridor, and they show you all of the different little rooms. All of the elves live in one of the rooms. There's one family per room here on the upper floor, which is the living quarters. Now if we go down one floor, we get to the hydroponics bay. You follow the elf, down another elevator. It opens up into an even bigger room with really high ceilings. All over the room is artificial light, growing plants, 
Huge towers of plants are everywhere. The floor of the room is covered in grass, and there's little goat-like creatures or something roaming around. We eat the vegetables and the milk from the goats. It gets us by. It's not exactly what we used to have, but it's a pretty good living, explains the elf. Just then, there's a power surge that goes through the asteroid. The lights turn off and then flicker back on. What was that, you ask? Our technology is unfortunately starting to break. It's very old when we built it in here, and we don't really have anywhere to get new materials. And we're still years and years away from a habitable planet, explains the elf. Well, that's no good. Do you think you'll be able to make it? If we can find a way to fix the energy system, we should be okay, says the elf. Just then, the power surges again, and some of the lights explode into sparks. And then all the power goes off. You press a button on your helmet and turn on a flashlight. Is that normal? You ask. No, that's not supposed to happen at all, says the elf. We need to fix this quick or the oxygen will run out. Okay, well, I guess we better get fixing it. Um, maybe I can help. Spaceship and I are pretty good at this sort of thing. What do you mean, spaceship and you? Oh yeah, I forgot to uh, introduce my friend here. Hey, spaceship, get in here. Understood, says Spaceship. Soon, Spaceship, in a very tiny size, appears beside you and grows a little larger, big enough for the others to see. You figure he must have shrunk down small enough to find a little hole and then made his way in to you. Spaceship, can you diagnose what's going on in here? You ask. Attempting diagnosis. Spaceship shines a bright yellow light around the room on all sides. Scanning, says Spaceship. Scan complete. The energy system has been severed. Oh, what do you mean, severed? Some of the cords that make up the energy system have been broken. Uh, but they're deep inside little caverns. We can't even get to them anymore, at least not easily and maybe not in time to save us. That is unfortunate, says Spaceship. Spaceship, don't you think we can help them? Yes, we can, says Spaceship. Don't you think we should help them? If you want, says Spaceship. Well, I do want, you say. It's the right thing to do. Now, let's see where these corridors are. The corridor with the broken cables is this way, Spaceship says, shining a light over towards a small hole at the bottom of the wall. It's right under what looks to be some sort of computer or control panel. You walk over towards the corridor. Well, Spaceship, I think this might be a good time to make me a little bit smaller. Understood, says Spaceship. Spaceship shines a bright yellow laser right at you. The laser begins to shrink you down bit by bit. You get smaller and smaller and smaller, and everything around you seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Once you're small enough to climb inside the hole, the light turns off. Follow the corridor and find the broken cable. You can use welders on your wrists to put it back together. Okay, you say. You fly up off the ground just a little bit and fly through the tiny little corridor. 
you follow the wire with your flashlight on, going left and right, up and down, around corners, and over top of little hills, until you get to something that looks like a cliff. The cliff heads straight up and so does the wire, so you follow it, shining your flashlight on it the whole time, looking for a break in it. After a while, the cord turns a corner once again and heads down a corridor. Once again, you follow it down the corridor until you come to an area where you see little sparks flying. That must be where it's broken. You fly over to it and you see that indeed the big cord has been completely cut. It looks like it's been chewed apart or something, you say. You look around trying to figure out what might have chewed it apart and you don't really see anything, but you decide to get one of your sleep rays out just in case. On your left hand, the sleep laser pops out of your wrist. Then, on your right hand, the welder pops out. You go over to the cord, you press it together against the other one as close as you can, and then you begin to weld away. Bright blue sparks fly up, but luckily your helmet protects you from the bright lights. You melt the wires back together using a special welder until you hear something beside you. It's a really strange but somewhat familiar sound. You look to the left, you turn on your light, and staring right at you is a really big mouse. You scream shortly and then point your laser at it and fire. The mouse suddenly stands upright and then falls over on its side and begins to sleep. Phew, you say. You turn around and you see 20 more mice on the other side. This may take a while. The mice start running at you and you start shooting your sleep laser. One by one, the mice get hit with it, straighten up and fall over until there's a huge pile of sleeping mice. You look left and right to make sure the coast is clear. And then you begin welding the line back together. Before long, you've completely connected the wire. Try the power now, you say. Turning power on, says Spaceship. You watch as sparks fly through the line and the lights in the tunnel turn on once more. The fix was successful, says the spaceship. You float up off the ground once more. You fly over the sleeping mouse and back towards the main part of the asteroid. You follow the line again, straight down the cliff and back out towards where you started. Once you exit, you fly in front of Spaceship and Spaceship immediately hits you with the yellow laser and starts growing you back to your normal size. It always feels strange and tingly to be shrunk or grown, but it kind of feels nice too. When you're fully grown, you get a little shiver down your spine. Oh, it always feels so strange, you say. Thank you. You fixed our ship. That's amazing. Well, why don't you stay here for a while? I think you could be useful, says the elven alien. Well, I guess so. Why not, you say. Where can we sleep? Follow me. You head back to the elevator and go up to the upper floor once more. The elf leads you to a door and opens it up. You can stay here. No one's lived here for a while now. You walk inside and see a huge room. Well, I mean, kind of huge, but everything in it's really tiny. 
There's little chairs, little beds, little couches, little sinks and kitchens. It's clearly made for someone much shorter than you. In the bedroom area, you find two beds and you push them together to make one that's big enough for you to lay down on. Then, you press the button on your spacesuit and it shrinks around you and folds back into the watch. You climb into the bed and pull the covers over top of you. It's actually very comfortable for such a small bed, you think. You put your head down on the pillow and you begin to allow yourself to relax. First, you let your shoulders relax and sink into the bed. Your arms and your hands. No need to move them or hold them up. Then your legs and your feet relax. Your stomach and your chest relax. And last, you allow your face to relax into a nice half smile and you allow your eyes to close. Good night, everyone.